when an Ariane 5 rocket lifted off from French Guiana on Christmas Day 2020. One, it carried a cargo of dreams. The James Webb Space Telescope. Those dreams belonged to astronomers hoping to peer farther into space than ever before, to a time when the first galaxies formed, to penetrate dust clouds to witness the birth of stars, and to probe the atmospheres of exoplanets to see if they might support life. After more than a year in space, James Webb is turning those dreams into reality. Join us as we dig deep into how James Webb is discovering distant clusters of stars that formed surprisingly early, presenting new mysteries about how the universe evolved. Telescopes such as James Webb are a bit like time machines. When they stare across great distances, they are also staring back in time. The link between time and distance in space comes from the fact that light doesn't travel instantaneously. Instead, light in a vacuum travels at a set speed of around 3.0 axon 108 meters per second. You don't worry about remembering that, though. Scientists generally just call it C. That means that anything we look at, no matter how close, is being seen at some point in the past. For objects like the neighbor's cat invading your garden again, the difference in time between the light leaving and arriving at our eyes is negligible. The travel time of light only really starts making a measurable difference when considering objects in space. Possibly the most natural way of thinking about this is in terms of Earth's most ubiquitous light source, the Sun. The Sun is about 93 million miles, 150 million kilometers, or around 8.33 light minutes from Earth, meaning that we always see the Sun as it was around 8 minutes and 20 seconds in the past. If the Sun suddenly blinked out, Earth wouldn't slip into darkness for around eight minutes. An observer on Uranus, which is almost 20 times farther away from the star than Earth, wouldn't notice for two hours and 40 minutes. This travel time of light becomes really significant when we start to look out into the universe with powerful instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope, a Takama Large Millimeter Array, and the Hubble Space Telescope. The captured light reveals objects as they appeared when they first glimmered sometimes millions or billions of years ago. As light travels through an expanding cosmos, it's stretched to longer, redder wavelengths. Astronomers can measure the extent of that stretch, called redshift, which can be used to calculate an object's distance. Higher redshifts mean an object is farther away. And for decades, astronomers have been racing to find the highest redshift galaxies. First with the Hubble and Spitzer Space Telescopes, and now with the Webb Telescope. Studying cosmic objects at high redshift is one of Webb's highest priorities. Perched a million miles from Earth, the telescope sees in the infrared, which makes it an ideal instrument for detecting longer, redder wavelengths of light. Galaxies spotted by the Supreme Observatory are already forcing astronomers to rethink exactly what constitutes high redshift, or high Z. According to Guido Roberts, Borsani of the University of California, Los Angeles, the James Webb Space Telescope has absolutely changed our definition of high Z. In 2015, the most distant galaxies known had redshift values of 8 or 9. But then the Hubble Space Telescope spotted a galaxy later named GNA Z11, around redshift 11, around redshift 11, and pushed the first galaxies even further back in time. But now... James Webb Telescope has eclipsed that. And the redshift frontier has been moved to values of 12 or 13, equating to about 13.3 or 13.3 or 13.4 billion years ago. In other words, we are seeing what galaxies looked like at a time when the universe was only 300 to 400 million years old. That's why when Emma Curtis, Lake, an astrophysicist at the University of Hertfordshire in England presented new record-breaking galaxies during a December science meeting at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. The entire room of astronomers gasped in delight. According to Curtis, Lake, a member of the James Webb Space Telescope Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, or JADE's collaboration, we've shifted into a completely new regime. This is the first time we've got confirmation of anything further away than Hubble could see, and this is just the beginning. 
Over the summer, Jade surveyed a well-studied patch of southern sky, a portion of the iconic Hubble Ultra Deep Field for primordial galaxies. The collaboration's galaxy hunters first sifted through the 100,000 galaxies in an image taken by Webb's near-infrared camera. This instrument can measure estimated redshifts based on a galaxy's light as seen through different filters. Then they aimed another instrument, Webb's near-infrared spectrometer, at the most intriguing targets. The spectrometer can reveal a galaxy's precise redshift, and therefore its age and distance, based on characteristic breaks in the spectrum of light coming from the galaxies. Those spectroscopic measurements are far more accurate, says Jade's team member Brant Robertson of the University of California, Santa Cruz, which is why astronomers consider them to be confirmation of a galaxy's redshift. Curtis, Lake, Robertson, and their colleagues confirm the distances to four galaxies that populated the primordial cosmos when it was only about 300 or 400 million years old. Two of them, though they are wicked far away, had also been spied by Hubble. The other two are farther away than anything Hubble could see, with redshifts of 12.6 and 13.2. These galaxies are largely made of lighter elements such as hydrogen and helium because they existed before large amounts of heavier elements had time to form. But when astronomers thrilled by the successes of James Webb are eager to find out just how far back it can see, they also have to admit that galaxies that glittered near the beginning of time are presenting new mysteries. As NASA's John Mather, Webb's senior project scientist, said during the American Astronomical Society meeting in Seattle, there are an awful lot of them, too many, too big, too bright, too mature, and too soon. They're sort of like little baby toddlers in a universe that hasn't really got going yet. Curtis, Lake says, Astronomers working on another early galaxy survey, the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Program, announced confirmations of more galaxies during the American Astronomical Society meeting, many of which are between redshifts of 8 and 9. The first Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Mosaic, a composite of 690 individual frames that details a patch of sky near the crook in the Big Dipper's handle, is one of the largest Webb Galaxy survey image released so far. Although none of the confirmed cosmic evolution early release science galaxies are as far away as the four spotted by Jades, an unconfirmed galaxy that astronomers are still investigating could be whoppingly distant. The candidate appears as a smudge at an estimated redshift of 16, meaning it could be impossibly young and far away. The team also revealed a tomato, shaped galaxy estimated at redshift 12, now known as Maisie's Galaxy after Finkelstein's daughter. Both these galaxies are awaiting spectroscopic confirmation. And in the meantime, other teams are busy identifying high redshift candidates among Webb's other early images. One of those teams, led by Hao Jing Yan of the University of Missouri, claims to have spotted 87 galaxies spanning redshifts 11 through 20. Those candidates are also awaiting confirmation. I'll bet $20 and a beer, a very tall one, that the success rate ought to be higher than 50%, Jan told reporters during the American Astronomical Society meeting. If even a small fraction of those candidate galaxies turn out to be as far away as initially estimated, then our previously favored picture of galaxy formation in the early universe must be revised. Now it's safe to say that less than two years since its first images were released, the James Webb Telescope has already changed astronomers' understanding of the early universe. Among its most surprising observations has been the sheer number of extremely bright, ancient galaxies, which would have formed in regions rich in dark matter. Since 2007, astronomers have proposed the existence of a weird type of star, one powered by the heat of dark matter. In cosmology, dark matter is a difficult thing to explain because we literally don't know what it is. We can't see it, hence the name dark, but without it factored into our equations of the universe, things just don't add up. Learning how certain so-called dark stars form would be a major win for better understanding our place in the cosmos. Now, the James Webb Space Telescope may have just proven that dark stars exist. The ancient universe was very different than it is today. 
Some astronomers believe that before our solar system existed, indeed before our galaxy was formed, dark stars were abundant. According to this theory, dark stars would have been fueled by large quantities of dark matter that would generate heat. This heat, in turn, would prevent dark stars from turning into modern stars. The bright, burning kind fueled by nuclear fusion. And, instead, to become enormous clouds of molecular hydrogen and helium. If these dark stars still exist today, they would be too cold and dark to be easily detected. Only their gamma ray, neutrino and antimatter emissions would reveal their existence, as might perhaps the presence of cold molecular hydrogen gas. A new study in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences suggests that thanks to the power of the Webb Space Telescope, we may have identified three entities that might very well be lingering dark stars. Theoretical physicist Catherine Fries, co-author of the paper and a physics professor at both the University of Texas and Stockholm University, has been pursuing different ways to detect dark matter since her career began in the 80s. In a 2008 paper in the journal Physical Review Letters, she and her colleagues proposed a new phase of stellar evolution, in which the first stars in the universe are much cooler and powered by the annihilation of dark matter. One of the leading theories about dark matter is that it's composed of a type of particle known as a WIMP, or weakly interacting massive particle. When two WIMPs collide, they can annihilate each other, transforming into other particles. This would generate energy that is different from the fusion process that powers modern stars, including our own, in which hydrogen atoms combine under extreme heat and pressure to form helium. However, until the James Webb Telescope came along, there have been no direct evidence supporting this theory about dark stars. Nothing has been proven for sure by our paper, Fries explained to Salon in an email. But it is some of the strongest evidence for dark stars to date. Back in 2007, Fries and her fellow co-author Cosmin Illy, then her graduate student at the University of Michigan, determined what a dark star would look like in the James Webb, once the telescope had enough data to test their theories. Fries and Eli began sifting through the new information. James Webb has found roughly 700 high redshift objects. From very early in the universe, Fries said, of these, one of their instruments has been able to measure spectra, the intensity, at different frequencies. For nine of them, thereby for sure proving that they are indeed from the early universe. Five of those nine produced usable data, and from there the researchers studied four of them as Jade's objects which stands for the James Webb Advanced Extragalactic Survey. In the end, Fries said, they determined that three of them are a good match to our predictions for dark stars. Those three objects include jades. The authors ruled out the possibility that their readings were somehow messed up by a low redshift contaminant, and they similarly found smoking gun. Features that their previous research had anticipated would signify the presence of dark stars. The study concludes with a bold proclamation. The confirmation of even a single one of those objects as a dark star would mark a new era in astronomy. The observational study of dark matter, powered stars. The discovery of a new type of star, made of hydrogen and helium, but powered by dark matter, would be a huge advance. Fries added, echoing the enthusiasm in her paper, as yet, it is not possible to distinguish dark stars from early galaxies. As yet, both are possible explanations for the data. Better spectra in the future will enable discovery of a helium line in the data. That would be a smoking gun for dark stars. The research team, which included Fries, Ely, and Gillian Pauline from Colgate University, suggests that these dark stars would not be lit by nuclear fusion but rather would be much more massive than most stars. So large they could even resemble galaxies from Earth, based telescopes. The researchers also argue that the dark stars collapse into supermassive black holes when they get older, which would explain why there are so many black holes in the universe. This is hardly the first ancient celestial discovery that would have been made possible by the James Webb. Speaking with Salon earlier this week, NASA official Dr. Michelle Thaller explained why she is particularly fond of some splotches that may be among the oldest known objects in the universe. 
The Big Bang was only about 13.8 billion years ago. So we're looking back to the very, very early youngest galaxies here, Thaler told Salon at the time. The thing that blows my mind about these splotches is that I never thought I would be able to actually see an image of this. When I was in astronomy grad school, and we were learning about what happened in the very earliest part of the universe. Fries also praised the Webb telescope in her interview with Salon, making it clear that it alone was technologically advanced enough to acquire this data. The James Webb Space Telescope is the only telescope as yet capable of seeing far enough back in the universe to discover dark stars, Fries told Salon, adding that other telescopic instruments currently being developed may also serve that purpose such as Roman and Euclid. As yet, all we know for sure is that objects have been found in James Webb that are the earliest ever to form in the universe. We don't know anything more about their past evolution until we know for sure what these objects are. Freeze concluded. As James Webb has earned the spotlight recently, its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, is still wonderfully trudging along. With its fluorescent blues and espresso brown hues, this Hubble image of the Virgo Cluster Galaxy is undeniably worth a double take. It's part of NASA's endeavor to share a new galactic image every day, a lovely treat for space gazers everywhere. Like with all beautiful space visuals, the book behind the stars is often just as striking as the cover. What you're looking at here are the swirling spiral arms of a galaxy named NGC 4654, which is located some 55 million light years from Earth. Right off the bat, that means we're seeing this realm as it was 55 million years ago, because one light year equals the time it takes for light to travel one year. Once this galaxy's photons finally reached the Hubble Space Telescope, the observatory was able to capture their source in visible, ultraviolet, and even infrared wavelengths. And this image is the product of its effort. According to a statement accompanying the image, over 500 million years ago, NGC 4654 is believed to have interacted with another galaxy known as NGC 4639, and the latter is thought to have stripped the former of some gas along its edge. Presumably, that happened as a result of NGC 4639's gravitational pull. Ultimately, scientists think this interaction limited star formation at NGC 4654's edge because all that interstellar gas contains the parts required to make new generations of stars in the first place. In fact, that's why NASA says studying galaxies like this, stunning one we see in the Hubble photo, is important. It's a way to investigate how stars form, and understanding how stars form is crucial for a variety of reasons. For example, it could help us study how planets are born around stars the way Earth came together around the Sun. NGC 4654 is one of many galaxies in the Virgo constellation, a celestial dot-to-dot -dot that's actually the second largest constellation in the sky. Visible to anyone in the Northern Hemisphere and to most in the Southern Hemisphere, NGC 4654 is considered an intermediate galaxy because it contains two types of hypnotic arms, barred and unbarred. Barred spirals have ribbons of stars, gas, and dust that cut across their central regions like, yes, bars. Unbarred spirals do not. Further, the release states, NGC 4654, has an asymmetric distribution of stars and neutral hydrogen gas, possibly due to a process where the entire Virgo cluster puts pressure on the galaxy as it moves through what's known as the intracluster medium. That's basically a superheated plasma, or ocean of charged particles, made mostly of hydrogen. This pressure feels like a gust of wind. Think of a biker feeling wind, even on a still day. That strips NGC 4654 of its gas, the release says. Peculiarly, that process also is expected to have halted star formation in the galaxy, yet NGC 4000, 654 appears to have popped up stellar bodies at a similar rate to its unaffected galactic siblings. Voila! There's another reason to figure out the connection between cold gas in galaxies and star formation. In another impressive observation, the Hubble telescope reveals a rare galaxy with a luminous heart. The scale of our sun is stressful. 
It's 333,000 times more massive than the entire Earth. But the galaxy NGC 612 captured by Hubble is 1.1 trillion times more massive than our Sun. Well, if it makes you feel any better, NGC 612 isn't as big as the Milky Way. The galaxy we live in is approximately 1.5 trillion times more massive than the Sun. Or maybe that didn't help. According to a new release about the new NGC 612 visual, this galaxy falls under a few classifications that make it particularly interesting for us to observe. Most interestingly, it's an active galaxy. In active galaxies, a supermassive black hole powers up the central region to create an incredibly energetic galactic heart. This heart, in turn, spews out jets of gas at nearly the speed of light. As a result of all that, the central spot also becomes so luminous that it outshines the combined light of every single star in the galaxy itself. Stunning. Though the Hubble Space Telescope's new view of NGC 612 is edge, on meaning we're seeing it from a side angle. It's easy to infer the spectacle happening in the middle. Notably, there's also a so-called central bulge in that area as well. By contrast, orange and dark red zones in this image represent a plane of matter called the galactic disk. That's where dust and cool hydrogen gas are located and where star formation, albeit sparse formation, albeit sparse, happens for NGC 612. Together, the bulge, disk, and lack of spiral arms reveal this galaxy to be a lenticular galaxy, which is key for something we'll get to later. The release also highlights how NGC 612 is a Seifert galaxy, which means it emits large amounts of infrared radiation, despite also being seen in visible light. Infrared wavelengths are a form of light that's invisible to human eyes. On the bright side, however, we have instruments that can pick up infrared signals to reveal those hidden sources, such as the James Webb Space Telescope and, of course, the Hubble Space Telescope, which is how this image was, in part, constructed. NGC 612 is a type II Seifert. The release further states, which means matter near the center of the galaxy moves rather calmly around the nucleus. The stars in this galaxy are unusually young, with ages around 40 to 100 million years. Returning to that lenticular bit, this galaxy is a rare example of a non-elliptical galaxy that beams out radio emissions. Astronomers have only discovered five radio, emitting lenticular galaxies like this one to date. As the release states, one theory attributes NGC 612's unusual radio emissions to a past interaction with a companion spiral galaxy. Another theory focuses on the galaxy's bright and dominant bulge, which is similar to those seen in elliptical radio galaxies. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.